more. So, so far we've gone over several routes to <clears throat> find the derivatives of a function. We talk about the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, the derivative of a constant. We talk about derivative of exponential function, logarithmic function, and the derivative of a constant. So several rules, they still apply. We're actually going to use them in this section. This is most of the applications of the rule. <clears throat> now, even though we have been finding derivative, when we find derivative, if you recall, what exactly are we trying to find when we find the derivative? Rate of change, exactly, right? So derivative is a rate of change, and this is actually the instantaneous rate of change. Which is kind of like the slope, but the slope is not instantaneous. But we kind of say they're the same. Now, the derivative does not exist everywhere on a function. Keep this in mind. Because does the slope exist everywhere? For example, let's take a little few examples here. If we have this function here, what is the slope? The slope is 3. I agree. And if we have y is equal to negative 3 over 5x plus 7, we know the slope is, what is the slope here? With a negative sign, right, Merta? Negative 3 fifth. And how about y is equal to 6? What would be your slope for this one? Isn't it just a horizontal line? So what is our slope then, Jenny? The uh, slope is zero. I agree with you on this. So the slope is equal to zero because it is a horizontal line. And you can see that if we take the derivative of all these three problems, it actually gives us the slope, right? So these are linear equations. How about if we have x is equal to 2? What is their slope? It's undefined. It's undefined, I agree. So you do see that slope does not exist everywhere. So if we have a vertical line, the derivative does not exist, right? Because it's undefined, the slope is undefined. So kind of going back to our derivative, which is the rate of change, I want to mention a couple of, so for us, it does not exist. One, or a vertical tangent line. And two, where we have sharp turns. And there are other conditions, but these are the only conditions that we're going to see. And here we're actually talking about, let's just clarify this. This is for our continuous function. So 
So if the function is not continuous, it means the function does not exist at that point. <coughs> so the derivative does not exist. So we might want to put here for discontinuities. I'll just give you an example of some of these. So let's look at this graphically. So if we have a function like this, maybe I should erase that. It doesn't look exactly like what I want. It looks more like this. So for this function, if we were to draw a tangent line at the origin, we will see that there's a vertical tangent line here. So at the origin, the derivative would not exist. And it doesn't have to be at the origin. It could be anywhere. We have a vertical tangent line. Because what's the slope of a vertical line? Lewis, no, let me go back to here. Remember, we're just saying that when we have a vertical line, the slope is undefined. So this is why the derivative doesn't exist. The derivative is also undefined. And if you take two points, for example, and we can prove that this is true, let's say we take a point here on the curve or the tangent line, and the point here is x is equal to zero and y is equal to negative three. And let's say this one is zero and three. And we're gonna find the slope. Let's call this one x1, y1, and x2, y2. And we plug them into our formula. This would be negative three minus three over zero minus zero, which gives us negative six over zero, which actually has no answer, right? If you stick this in your calculator, it's actually, it should say error. And the word we use for that is undefined. All right, so, so that's why the derivative does not exist at that point. Um, sharp turns. Now, sharp turns comes in a number of forms, right? It doesn't have to be well, so here's a sharp turn. And it could even be lines, like the absolute value line. So this could be like this. So here the derivative does not exist. So there's no way to draw a tangent line at these points. Say we have the function y is equal to one over x, and we sketch this. This graph actually looks like
So from this, we can see that here we actually have a line going up and down like this. This is actually called a vertical asymptote, if you remember this. But because the function is not continuous, like we were saying earlier, the derivative doesn't exist. The graph does not exist at that point. So for the derivative to exist, first of all, the function must be continuous. For a derivative to exist, it must be continuous. And there can be no vertical tangent lines or sharp turns on a graph. Are we clear on this? Any questions on this? No. Definitely. All right, let's talk more about increasing and decreasing function. So if we have a function that looks like lines, colored lines, the graph that looks like this, what is the slope of this graph? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it zero? Is it undefined? It's positive, I agree. So here, M is positive. Now, if the slope is positive, then we say the function is increasing. And it doesn't have to be a line, right? If you look at this, this is increasing. And the way we tell is because just like the lines, we're reading them from left to right. If the graph is going up from left to right, it's still increasing. So all these graphs are increasing. No, let's look at the decreasing. So here we go. Here M is negative. So if M is negative, then so I'm gonna stay consistent. Our function is decreasing. This also means, let's go back up to here, f prime of x is negative, is positive. Your textbook will probably say f prime of x, the derivative is greater than zero, which is the same thing as saying it's positive. Here, the slope is negative, which means f prime of x is less than zero. Just same thing as saying it's negative. And of course, it doesn't have to be line. This is negative and this is negative. <clears throat> All 
Any questions so far? I'm going to grab some examples from your textbook. Yeah, fortunately, Lewis, this is the easy part. <laughs> So here we have a graph. The question is to identify the regions where this function is increasing and decreasing. So this is actually number one in my math lab. So this is 3.1, number one. So just saw your comment, Louis. This is true. All right, so where is this function increasing and where is it decreasing? Is that large enough for you guys? Can you see it clearly? All right, so where is it increasing or decreasing? All right, so let's see these answers. It says negative 10 to 0, wait, negative 2 to 0. Louis says wait again. <laughs> All right. All right, Louis, um, even though they don't put this on the graph, the graph actually continues down like this. So, right, so they goes on for right that. Look at this graph. We can actually break this graph into two parts. And this is probably the center of the graph. And if we look at this, we I think we can all agree that this side is increasing. Because from left to right, it's going up. Right? And this side over here is decreasing. Do we agree with that? All right, so let's look at the increase in side. What is the lowest X value on this? Because when we talk about increasing and decreasing, we're talking about the domain, All right? So be careful. So we're not concerned about the Y values. It's, we're looking at the domain. So what's the X values over which this function is increasing? <clears throat> now keep in mind once again that this graph continues forever and ever and ever, right? 
And as it continues this direction, it's going more and more to the left. So what's the lowest x value we're going to have? If the graph continues all the way to the left, what's the lowest x value we're going to have? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. I agree with you on that, right? Which is what Damien said already, right? So the lowest x value we're going to have is negative infinity. Now, where does this go to? Where does it increase up to? What's the x value that it's increasing to? Two. Two. So be careful, Damien. I think you wrote a y value, right? So this is actually two here. We won't talk about these increase and decrease in their axioms for the x values. And it does not include the two. Right? <clears throat> because at the two, what's happening? What's the slope at two? Does anyone know? How's the tangent line going to look at two? You sure, Samira? If we draw the tangent line at two, it should look like this, right? Do we agree with that? Samira, is that vertical? Or is it horizontal? All right, so if it's horizontal, what's the slope? The slope from here. So m is equal to zero, right? This is why when we come over here and say increasing, we do not include the two because it's not increasing at two. At two, the slope is equal to zero. Right, so it's not increasing at two. It doesn't include the two. Now let's talk about the decreasing. Where is this decreasing? Two to infinity. Two to infinity, right? So it goes from two to infinity. Is Lewis, I'm not sure I understand your question. Was that what you're asking me? Maybe, I think I'll, you asked me, where does this end then, right? I think that's what you're asking me. Is that what you're saying? So if we were to write this out, it would be negative infinity to 1.9999999999 forever and ever and ever and ever. So the easier way of saying that is it goes up to two, but it does not include the two. This is what this open parentheses mean. <clears throat> Remember in math, if we use a square parentheses, that means it includes a number. So with the round parentheses, it says it goes up to two, but does not include it. 
hope that answers your question. And the decrease in here is from two to infinity. All right. Now, where's the highest point on this graph? You're welcome. What's the highest point on this graph? y is equal to 4. I agree, Don. And y is equal to 4 when x is equal to 2. So right here, this is actually the highest point on the graph. This is really what we're interested in in this section. This point here is a maximum, and it's actually called a relative maximum. Now we're gonna talk about this a little bit more down here, but let's just do a couple more of these examples. I'm gonna move on to the next my MATLAB problem. All right, can you all see this clearly? All right. So same question. This is actually number two in my MATLAB. And they're asking us for the regions where it's increasing and decreasing. All right. Does anyone have an answer to this? It's increasing from negative infinity to three and then from six to infinity. From six to infinity, is that six? So, all right, let's make sure. So Jenny, you're saying from... I mean, this, not six. Right, you're saying here, this section is increasing. And here, from this section, it's also increasing. Is that what you're saying? Yes. All right. Does everyone agree with that? And it's increasing from negative infinity to, what did you say? The numbers are a little weird. Three. One, two, three. Okay, so I agree with that. And, and we use a symbol here to show that it's multiple places. And we read this as union. And where else again? Nine to infinity. Where? Nine. Nine to infinity? Yes. And nine to positive infinity. Now, Lewis, let's look at this piece of the graph here. Is this going? up or is it going down from left to right? Remember, we always read our graph from left to right. 
it's going down. So is it increasing then in that little blue section now? It's decreasing. So the whole graph is not um, increasing. This piece is decreasing. All right, what's the domain for that? Three comma nine. Three comma nine. So it's decreasing from the x values of three to the x value of nine. Trying to get up to number seven. But let's talk about relative extrema in some depth, actually. So this is just about increasing and decreasing function. Our goal actually is to talk about relative extrema using first derivative. First thing we want to talk about is the relative maximum. Now, we have a relative maximum on the graph where the function goes from increasing to decreasing. So if we have a graph like kind of like the one we had before that looks like this. This point here would be a relative maximum. And the reason why is because it's going from increasing to decreasing. And here we also know that prime of x is greater than zero and f prime of x is less than zero. Now in this problem that's actually the highest point on the curve. But the reason why we call it relative maximum or relative minimum is because let's say this graph was to continue like this. Is this point now the highest point on the graph? No. These points, all these points over here, Merta, aren't these points higher than that point? Okay, so let's go back to this point. Is it the highest point on the graph? No, right? And this is why we use the word relative. It's relative to what's that mean on the immediate left and on the immediate right. Sometimes it's the highest point on the graph, but sometimes it's not. What classify it as a relative max is that it goes from increasing to decreasing. It doesn't matter if it's the highest point on the graph or not. Now, it doesn't have to be 
you know, very smooth like that. If we were to draw a tangent line at that curve, at a relative max, how would a tangent line look again? You remember, what would a tangent line look at, like at that relative maximum? It's a horizontal tangent line. And what would the slope be like at this horizontal tangent line? <clears throat> what would the slope be for this tangent line? Zero. Mer Zero, right? When it's, when it's a vertical, it's undefined. Don't mix them up. It's easy to mix them up. I'm going to give you another graph. <clears throat> so would you say this graph has a relative maximum on it? Yes, right? I agree with you guys on this because here it's increasing and here it's decreasing. And if it goes from increasing to decreasing, then we have a relative max. And right here at this point, this is our relative max. Now, what's the slope at where this relative max is occurring? We know for the one above, the slope for that curve was, you know, zero. Well, what is the slope of the tangent line here? Come on, zero, why is zero done? Are you saying it has a horizontal tangent line? Uh, no, I'm not sure. So it's right You're not sure. No, let's go back up to the top, yes. Let's a little processing, but let's go back here. Goes back to this. What do we say? What's what's the derivative? What's the slope at those points? I uh, came in late. I didn't catch this part. All right. So, but you can read it right. It does not exist. Right, so, so, and this is what we we're saying earlier, you know, when we have a sharp turn on the graph, the derivative does not exist. Right. So here, where the relative max is, M is undefined. And your textbook will probably use these abbreviation, which mean does not exist. You'll see DNE sometimes. <clears throat> now, what I want to draw your attention to is that everywhere we have a relative extrema or a relative max, So let's put this here, a relative maximum occurs where 
m is equal to zero or m is does not exist. Another way of saying is that f prime of x is equal to zero or the derivative does not exist. And the x value we're talking about here is actually have a special name. So here the x value is known as a critical number. And a lot of time in your textbook, they'll use that to be C. So here, this is a critical number. Kind of the back up to this problem up here. Number one, what is the critical number in this function? Two. So here the critical number is two. How about this one? What is the critical number? Our numbers. Three and nine. Three and nine, right? So the critical numbers are three and nine. So we actually have This one would be a relative max. And this one would be a relative min. We're going to define a relative min now. But the concept is still the same. The relative minimum is going to occur wherever, you know, we have that turn on the graph. So let's just talk about this relative min here. So if you have a curve and it looks like this, you know, this point here, that's a relative min. And this point is decreasing. So this is where f prime of x is less than zero. And this side here is increasing. And this is where f prime, the derivative, is greater than zero. So not to overcomplicate this. You know, it's just like here. We have a maximum when the function goes from increasing to decreasing. So here we have a relative min. When the function goes from decreasing to increasing. Once again, the point on here, this is our critical number. In this case, numbers. All right, is everyone okay so far?
So we have maximum and minimum, which is based on increasing or decreasing, which is actually also based on slope, right? It's all about slope and derivatives. I know we're looking at a lot of graphs here, right? But the majority of the questions doesn't have a graph in it. So, you know, let's see what the majority of the questions look like. This is actually number seven from my math lab. Find any critical numbers and any relative extrema. I don't actually think this question is correct. <laughs> I think there's a typo in my MATLAB on this, but let's see. I actually think this should be a nine. thinking something else. They are right. Of course, my MATLAB doesn't make error, right? All right, so how do we find the critical values for this? Any ideas? I know this is a stretch, but it's based on everything that we have done so far. Where are the critical values on the graph? At the, the derivatives, right? Which derivative? So the critical values are going to be, Marissa, it's where the derivative is equal to zero or the derivative does not exist. You guys got that? So critical numbers, let's put it here. I know we said it in the graph. Where the derivative is equal to zero or does not exist. Just have to check the spelling of that. All right, so what are we going to do then for this to find the critical numbers? We have to take the derivative. So, what's the derivative of this? What's the derivative of this function? 2x plus 6. 2x plus 6. 
right? And the critical numbers is where the derivative is equal to zero. So we're going to set this equal to zero and solve it. So what do we get for that? X equals negative three. X is equal to negative three. All right. Now this part here, we're not going to worry about. This is only for, let's put this up here. This is only for derivative with fractions. And then you're going to set the denominator equal to zero. So one time we, so if we took the derivative here and we got a fraction, then we'd have to set the bottom also equal to zero, but there's no fractions here. <clears throat> so now we know that this curve here has a critical number and negative three. So we just found part A. How do we find out if it's a relative max or a relative min? <clears throat> Does anyone remember what this graph looks like? It's a parabola. It's a parabola, right? Is it right side up or upside down? Right side up. It's right side up. Hmm. That's good to know. Yeah. Okay. In most of these graphs, we probably won't even know what they look like, but it doesn't stop us from doing the math. So if we know it's a parabola, and the critical number here is at negative three, where is it increasing from? Where is it increasing and decreasing in this function? It's increasing from negative three to infinity and decreasing from negative infinity to negative three. And it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative three. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. And that's true based on our knowledge of this graph, right? So is this a relative max or a relative min? Min. It's a min. I agree with you because here this is decreasing and this piece is increasing, right? <clears throat> now, mathematically, what, you know, my plan and your textbook would probably ask you to do is we're going to make a table for this and our intervals based on our critical number is from negative infinity to negative three and then from negative three to infinity. Okay. Now what I want you to do is choose a test point. And your test point must be somewhere in this function here. So what's a good test point to choose between negative infinity and negative three? Come on, just choose a number between negative infinity and negative three, it doesn't matter. Negative one. Negative? I can't hear you. Negative one. One. Negative one. I mean four. Negative four, right? Because negative one 
we could use negative one over on this side. Do you agree? Now, what you need to do after you do that is find f prime of the test point. So we're going to plug in the test point into the derivative. And the derivative was what? 2x plus 6. So we're going to do So we're going to find f prime of negative 4. Which gives us what? This side equals negative 2. Negative 2, I agree. And if we do f prime of negative 1, What do we get for that? Positive 4. Positive 4. No, what did we just find? This is the slope, right? No. No, if the slope is negative, then we know the graph is decreasing. And here the slope is positive, so we know it's increasing. So we can see that the graph is going from a decreasing to an increasing function. Therefore, we know that this point here is a relative min. Because like I said, I know you know what a graph looks like, Jenny, but we always won't know that. So you probably want to go through the process. Now we're still not finished. Uh, so we know the critical point is negative three. To find a relative, min, we need to find f of the negative 3. So we're trying to find a y value. So if we go back to the original function, it was x squared plus 6x plus 6, yes. So it's going to be negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 6. That's negative 3 also. So our relative min then is negative 3, negative 3. If we were to actually sketch this graph, we could see that negative 3, negative 3. Our graph actually looks something like this. So this is where the relative min is, where negative 3 is on the x and negative 3 is on the y. So when they ask us for the relative min, our relative max, they ask us for, you know, both x and y value. 